Okay, so just to finish off, I think it's worth thinking about how these list functions, like uh, min and max and sum, how are they actually coded? Because you may, you know, you start to think, okay, I know, but I can get the min of this list by just asking for min back. How does that actually work? We're going to build our own versions to see how they work. Um, now, naively, you, one way to find the minimum version, the minimum value in a list, would be to sort it and return the first entry. Uh, but there are, that's not, um, that would certainly get the right answer, but it's uh, problematic. So, for example, if you do that, you might uh, annoy the user because they don't want their list sorted. They just wanted to know what the minimum value was. They don't want the list sorted. And the second thing that might be a problem with that is that uh, lists can have hundreds or thousands or millions of values in, and sorting is relatively slow. So if you sort a, an enormous list, that could take you know anything from minutes to hours to do. So you, whereas finding a minimum value is actually much quicker than that in general. So you don't want to sort a list. So to do a minimum, a better way is just to record the smallest value found so far in a variable. And as you scan the list, you go through the list. If you find something that's smaller than that, you just update the variable. Um, and the way you want to make sure that you, you know, you could start with the smallest being zero, but then the, the whole list, list might contain values that are all bigger than zero. So the way to make sure that you, you, you have something as the smallest value is to start with the smallest being the first item on the list. <coughs> then you can work through the rest of the list using a slice. So for item in items, going from item one up to the end and loop through the list like that. Okay, that will then uh, generate the minimum. I think we've got the, uh, the example here. Yeah, okay, so here we are. We've got minimum version one that sorts the list and then returns item zero, which is, as I said, is a bad idea. Instead, we find the smallest equals item zero and then we loop over the list from one onwards. And if the item is less than the smallest, then we set the smallest to be the item. And finally, when, when we've looped all the way through the list, then we return that smallest value. For the sum, uh, the maximum incidentally is, is almost exactly the same, except we're looking for the, the largest one. And for the sum, uh, we just set a, a value total to be equal to zero. And every we run through the list, adding the value of each item to the total. So there's the code. Um, so get min version one shows you the, the using the sorting the list, which I think is a bad idea. Uh, get min version two is the better idea, and then get the sum. We just uh, we set this total to zero, and then we loop over all the items in the list and add them into the total. So there you are. There's the list. Uh, if we use get min version one, get min version two, they should pr both produce the same thing or just the, the regular min version. Min um, built in function will give you six, or set, get sum and sum should give you the same value. So, we're just that there is just checking that our functions, notice here, just checking that our functions get min version one and two and min <coughs> and get sum and sum are producing the same results. Okay, so we've seen how to uh, do those um, local versions of those functions to see how they work. So just to summarize the lecture then, lists are um, a really common way of storing multiple data values in a single variable. So we have one variable that's the, the name of the list, like fruits or randoms, uh, and then it stores lots and lots of values. Uh, it's very fundamental, and it's the data counterparts of loops. So loops are, you know, the they loop over a bunch of things, and often the things that they're looping over are the items in a list. So loops and lists are very often used together. Uh, we can use the list indices to access particular values. Um, and as, as we've seen, we can use negative values to start from the end of the list, and we can also use slices to get bits of the list. And then we've looked at a number of uh, list-based methods. Uh, so doing things like sorting and re reversing and clear. Uh, they're not the only ones, but those are the, perhaps the commonest ones. And we've looked at library methods that can uh, work with lists like the length and the max and the min and the sum. Okay, thanks for listening. Uh, and I'll see you next week for uh, strings, I think it is next week. <laughs>